and welcome to the video. This one asks the question, would punk have happened without pub rock? Now I've got a certain viewpoint on this which most people do not agree with, but let me explain. First of all, pub rock started because it was a reaction to the overblown music and the trivial pop stuff that was on the radio. Keep me punk too cool all together now. Well, I really don't and was mainly all the bands went a bit weird and they played in big concert halls and it was all pomp rock and whereas people want to go out and they want to enjoy themselves go in pubs have an informal atmosphere as i've said in other videos pub rock was always a thing in london but in the early 1970s it was engineered shall we say into more of a thing by people deliberately opening up new venues a few years earlier in the late 1960s, I think 68, Time Out was started by the late and very great Tony Elliott. And without Time Out, which was basically a what's on for music and cinemas and all sorts of things, there would have been no pub rock because it basically gave you the opportunity pre-internet to find out who was playing where and things like that. So that was an essential part of it all. It was all like an organic thing, all this. It's like life starting on Earth. And pub rock created not only in venues where people could go, but it created the people who wanted to go and see them. Because without that opportunity, there would have been no audience. Hello, my name is Andrew Lincoln. I used to be one of the most powerful men in the UK music industry. I'd just like to say that only Jim Driver tells you how it really was back in the pub rock era. Now, back to the video. The whole thing about pub rock was there was all different types of music. I cannot stress this. It wasn't just like people playing country rock, which is how people tend to characterize it now. There was ska, there was reggae, there was folk, there was jazz, there was avant-garde things happening. There's people like Lowell Coxhill. <laughs> who I saw one night just stand in the corner of a pub and just play to himself, in effect, facing the wall. And he did it in a mischievous way. He was a very good avant-garde musician, but he wasn't one to, um, shall we say, create a mass market following. So there's all sorts of things happening in the pubs. There was comedies, there were one-man bands like Dusty Bennett. I tell you everybody, watch yourself. You gotta watch yourself or watch everybody else, gotta tell you. Bennett and Johnny G and people like that. And there was everything you could think of. I mean, really, I can't think of any form of music I've seen that you couldn't see back in the pubs. Every night there'd be, a, I don't know, 30, 40 places you'd go and watch music, especially at the weekends. And out of that came bands like The Damned. <laughs> Sex Pistols and people like that because let's face it Malcolm McLaren wouldn't have been able to create the Sex Pistols without them being able to play in certain venues and okay so they played at colleges and things like that but their bread and butter shows were in places like the Nashville and pubs basically and Joe Strummer who was one of the founders of the Clash he played in the pub rock band famously called the 101ers, who started off at the Elgin at Labrook Grove and spread all over West London to start with and then... Hello, Andrew Lincoln here again. Just a reminder that I'd like you to press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Jim Driver's epic YouTube channel. Now, back to the video. And there was Kilburn and the High Roads, which was um, Ian Jury's band before Ian Jury the Blockhead. <laughs> pub rock thing was quite closely allied to the alternative London of the underground magazines like Oz and IT and Friends and also of course Time Out magazine was um, seen in that world. So, so when punk came along that had roughly the same roots for example the 101ers got their name from the squat where Joe Strummer and other people lived which was 101 Elgin Avenue and there was that close bond so when punk came along it was more of a continuation than most people think. It was an exciting in time, the explosion in music labels after 76, it had already started, it had already been shown the way by people like Chiswick Records, who'd already started, and obviously Island that started in the late 60s, and Virgin that started in 72, I think. And so there was already, well, basically there was a blueprint of how to start a record label. And let's face it, if Ted Carroll and Roger Armstrong can start Chiswick Records, why can't somebody else start Rough Trade Records or whatever 
heard that it was, and the, the explosion in punk and new wave labels was already underway. In 75, 76, when bands like Eddie and the Hot Rods from South End. Why don't you ask them what they expect from you? And Dr. Feelgood from Canvey Island and South End. They were doing things slightly differently. They were doing it with a high energy style, which punk picked up on. And a lot of the punk thing was when Malcolm McLaren. I've always been a punk rocker and I started a group called the Sex Pistols in England, which was very much to do with the street and what was going on. It had a lot of politics in there and a lot of social awareness, and we wrote lyrics that was very much to do with the time and the feeling and where people were at. Now, a lot of people dispute this, but Malcolm McLaren had just got back from New York, and he'd seen high-energy rock. He wanted to manufacture it in London, and he wouldn't be able to do that if there wasn't already this circuit of venues that they could actually try out things and find their audience, and that's exactly what they did. It's so intertwined, is punk with the pub rock scene, that I say, and comment, let me know what you think. If you agree or disagree, let me know what you think, but my contention is that pub rock paved the way for punk. Believe me, punk would never have happened without pub rock. And I think I've just proved it. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and I'll see you next time. Check out my other videos. If you find them entertaining, then please watch them. This is possibly one of the least entertaining ones I've done. So if you'd like this one, the chances are you'll like the other ones better. If you don't like it, well, it's been nice to see you. See you, well, not see you again. But if you did like it, I'll hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Cheek.